Hi, this is JBC News. I'm Brooke. I'm Jake. And I'm Kate. Um, I'm going to be talking about the California wildfires. I'm going to be talking about the 8th grade trip to Washington, D.C. And I'm going to be interviewing an 8th grade teacher. Let's get to it. This is Catherine reporting, here to tell you about the current talk in Hurley Middle School in Seekonk, Massachusetts. Today, I will be talking about the 8th grade trip here at Hurley. The 8th graders here are preparing for their end of year school trip to Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, and Baltimore, getting ready for a fun and educational trip, great for ending off their middle school journey. Back in December, there was a holiday wreath fundraiser that gave students an opportunity to help them financially with going to the trip. For each $12 wreath, six would go into their field trip payment. The second fundraiser is coming up in February with calendars, and the final, the, and the final one is in spring. Also in December, the first payment of $120 was due. Up until the trip, the students must pay $120 when each payment date comes around. This number can be reduced each time with the total amount of money they made during the fundraisers. They have up until April 2nd to change their mind once they submitted the paperwork and receive a full refund other than the money that they made during the fundraisers. Some of the required paperwork they must have turned in by now to attend the trip includes the permission form, behavior to contract, and overnight medical form. There are some ways to lose the privilege of going on to this trip, though. If the student is suspended out of school once or suspended in school more than once, or if they have gathered more than three office detentions. Also, if someone does not want to attend by choice, they are welcome to go on the virtual field trip at the middle school. The whole field trip is from June 5th to the 8th, right at the end of the school year. This lets the students be able to have fun and enjoy time with friends until they have to go to high school. On the first day, June 5th, the students will arrive at the school at 5 o'clock a.m. for the bus departure at 5.30 via Academy bus lines. The first stop would be Philadelphia, where they will visit the U.S. Constitution Center, the Liberty Bell, Independence Hall, and then finally depart for Washington, D.C. at 6.45. The next day at 9.15, after a breakfast at the hotel, they will head to the White House and talk on the north side Lafayette Park, and then go to the Arlington National Cemetery to see the iconic changing of the guard at Memorial Hall, as well as the Kennedy Gravestone. Later, after lunch, they will view the Lincoln, Vietnam, and Korean War memorials, and then they will go to Fort Myer for the Twilight Tattoo. On the third day, they depart at 8.30 a.m for their first stop at the nation's capital, and lunch will be at the Hard Rock Cafe. Then they will visit the Martin Luther King Jr. and Franklin Delano Roosevelt Memorials, and then the Smithsonian's of Air and Space and American and Natural History. The dinner that night will be very special with a dance and a game show that includes the students. On the final day, they depart at 7.30 for Baltimore. And there they will visit Fort McHenry, the Inner Harbor, for lunch, the Camden Yards, and take a tour of the Babe Ruth House. Finally, at 3 o'clock, they will start to head back to Seekonk and will arrive at Hurley Middle School at 10.30 p.m. In conclusion, the Hurley 8th graders are in store for a wonderful trip that they will remember as a great memory in their middle school lives. On to you, Jake. I'm Jake. Today, I'm sharing a devastating story about the California wildfires. These wildfires have destroyed nearly 4,700 homes in Northern California and left 10,000 partially damaged. Many people lost their homes and don't really know what to do, including a man from Northern California named Damien Cogdon. His house burned down and his insurance won't be enough to rebuild the home. Many people like Damien could be waiting months to return to the neighborhoods because they are trying to find contractors and local permitting agencies. People with burned houses have a, few, have a few options. One option is that the state of California allows homeowners to postpone the payment of their property taxes if the house has received more than $10,000 in damage or maybe it is entirely gone. If homeowners postpone their, ha their taxes and receive disaster relief, they, they will owe less money when the bill comes due. Some people even want to buy bigger houses, but many houses burn down, so most of them are struggling. Santa Rosa has nearly has lost nearly 3,000 homes since the fires began. Local of officials in California's counties that were most affected by the fires are working with federal emergency and disaster relief agencies to set up temporary shelters and find new ways to speed up their rebuilding process. But, if it, but it involves several layers of permits and approvals. Many people
people in Northern California lost their homes due to these wildfires, and many of them, of the, many of their houses burned down. Some want to rebuild their houses, and others want to buy bigger houses. That's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching about the California wildfires. Next up is Brooke, who is interviewing Mrs. Pellegrino. Hi, my name is Brooke, and today I'm here with a special guest, Mrs. Pellegrino, the eighth grade teacher for the Orange Team. And I'll be asking her a few questions about teaching and just things like that. Okay. Um, how long have you been a teacher for? This is year 17 for me. Um, why did you decide to go into teaching? Um, I didn't really decide to go into teaching. I just kind of fell into teaching. I didn't mean to be a teacher. It just kind of happened. Okay. <laughs> I love it, though. I'm really happy where I landed. Um, did you want to do something else other than teaching? I had another job before as a teacher. I, uh, I worked at a group home for be behaviorally disordered teenage girls. And that's kind of how I ended up teaching. How long did you do that for? Three years. And um, they paid for um, related college coursework, and so I took a couple of education classes, and I liked it. Um, how do you try to make learning fun for your students? Um, I try to react to the kids in front of me. Like, I'll have an idea of where I want to go, but then I kind of like to look at their reaction, see how it's going, and then try to find creative ways to do things. And I'll look for stuff online, and I'll talk to other teachers, and talk to kids and see if they have do you, would you say that you give a lot of homework? I don't think I give a lot of homework. No, why Do you not? Think I give a lot of homework? Uh, no, not really. Sometimes though. Yeah. Like like last night, you guys had a lot of homework. <laughs> but in general, no. I think that homework needs to be really well thought out and have an exact purpose of why that student is taking time away from their family lives, from their activities. Um, and from whatever else it is that they might need to be doing. So I think it really needs to be well thought out and purposeful. Yeah, I think this is the least, like the class that we get the least amount of homework in. I feel like though, if I, if I do give you homework, I expect it done. Yeah. Like, and it's gonna count for something. Because mm -hmm. if I took that time away from you, then it should have a reason. Um, has it ever gotten boring teaching the same thing four times every day? No, no, yes, no. Not really, because you have different people. So the way that I might teach your class something might be different than the way I teach another class. And it gives you a chance to kind of perfect it and, and, and look at it different ways. I mean, if the lesson itself, like if the material itself is boring, then teaching it four times is boring. But at that point, if I'm bored, I usually feel like I'm doing something wrong. So I need to go back and adjust it. Um, are you in charge of any after school activities? Yep. The debate team. Okay. Is that fun? I think they like it. Um, where they seem like they're doing a good job, and we'll see how we do at our first tournament in January. Okay. One last cl one last question. Um, were you in any uh, okay? Were you in any after school activities when you were in middle school? I was. I was on the swim team, and I was um, in. And those are all after school activities? Um, oh, wait, no, BAM was during school. Um, but guitar was after school. And that, did that like interfe interfere with like homework and stuff? Yeah, a lot. I think that's kind of like why I think, one of the reasons why I think about homework the way that I did. Okay, well, thank you for being here with me today. And this concludes my interview with Mrs. Pellegrino. Thank you. Um, are you in charge of any after school activities? Yep, the debate team. Is that fun? I think they like it. Um, where they seem like they're doing a good job, and we'll see how we do at our first tournament in January. Okay. One last qu one last question. Um, were you in any uh, okay? Were you in any after school activities when you were in middle school? I was. I was on the swim team, and I was um, in the band. And I played the guitar. Oh, sorry. And those are all after school activities? Um, oh, wait, no, band was during school. Um, but guitar was after school. And that, did that end, like interfere with like homework and stuff? Yeah, a lot. I think that's kind of like why I think, of, one of the reasons why I think about homework the way that I do. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you.
thank you for being with, here with me today, and this concludes my interview with Mrs. Pellegrino. Thank you. Thank you for watching JBC News. Tune in next week to see more news. <laughs>